Hey everybody, Campfire Chords back with you. Hey, I uh, wanted to uh, go over a topic uh, which uh, was a big stumbling block for me for a number of years in my guitar playing journey. Um, so wanted to break down some concepts here about bar chords with you guys. Um, I think one of the biggest stumbling blocks with them is, is that um, just, you know, they're unfamiliar uh, they're difficult, obviously, to form, but also, you know, they have unfamiliar names. The concepts are unfamiliar. So I hope to demystify and, you know, dispel some, you know, things that, you know, those of us that uh, were novices at one point in time and, you know, didn't know how to play these, you know, that just kind of there were hurdles that uh, kept us from, you know, accomplishing and incorporating bar chords into our, you know, daily playing. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to focus around basically... Uh, four shapes here. So, um, and I'm going to, you know, talk a little bit about music theory, just a little bit, just enough, you know, to help to kind of uh, to form this in your mind, you know, to help it to, you know, to, to kind of connect the dots, so to speak. Okay, so we've got first shape here, which should be familiar to any, you know, guitar player, you know, even a beginner here, we've got an E minor. All right, second shape is going to be a E. And then we've got an A minor and an A. Okay, so okay, so the shapes that I'm describing here, those are obviously open chord shapes. Well, um, they also, you know, are used frequently in bar chords as well, to mean the fact they're the most commonly used uh, shapes. Uh, you know, as an example, obviously, you know, you have your E, and then you bar down here, and then you have an F. Um, okay, and so let's talk a little bit about why that is the case. So, you know, if you think about it in theory, you know, if you use a capo, which, you know, a lot of beginners, you know, do use, if I capo on the first fret here, a capo on the second fret, you know, changes the voicing, the sound of the guitar. So, um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, music, you know, theory is concerned, you know, and as far as the scale is concerned, each one of the frets is a half step, you know, between the notes. Um, there are 12 notes in, in the uh, you know, Western scale there, um, and uh, there are two um, letters there that have only a half step in between them. The rest of them have a whole step. Okay, so in the case of an E to an F, that is only a half step. So if I take a capo and I put it on the first fret here, then I'm only increasing, you know, the guitar. Up, I'm only taking the guitar up a half of a step here. Um, and so as a result, then everything I play is going to then be in F instead of E. Uh, likewise, if I move it down to here, that's F sharp, you know, G, um, G sharp or A flat, and then A. Okay. Same thing applies in principle uh, with barring, you know, the uh, guitar. So, you know, whenever I put my finger across here, then I'm in, in essence capoing, you know, the guitar or changing, you know, the end of the, the guitar, the nut, I'm moving it down on the guitar. It's obviously going to make the guitar sound higher as a result. Um, so, you know, you start out with an E and then you, you know, bar then here and that's an F, that's an F sharp, that's a G. A flat or G sharp and A. Okay, you know, same idea here with an, you know, E minor. All right, so if I move that down to here, then that becomes an F sharp minor. Then that becomes a G minor. Again, you know, A flat or G sharp and an A minor. Um, a minor. And this is going to be a B minor. And this is going to be a C minor. C sharp minor. And a D minor. All right. So with your A, then A. Now, if you can fit your fingers in to do this, obviously, idealistically, the way you would play this bar chord would be you would continue to hold the A shape with your, you know, three fingers there, uh, depending on whether you play them 
you know, with your first three there. Obviously, if you're barring, you're going to need this one. So, you know, the, if you can maintain the shape with the first three, then, you know, that's that's ideal. But uh, uh, I can't get my fingers in there nor to stretch, you know, quite to the point, you know, to form that. So what I do and what a lot of people do then instead is just go ahead and bar. Kind of the same idea as a lot of people will bar on an A. Um, you can do the same thing, you know, on a B. You know, again you know, your uh, B sharp, C, you know, so on and so forth there. Um, so if you're probably already making some connections there, if you're listening, so, you know, probably one of the things that you probably heard was, you know, this is an A, you know, uh, major bar chord here, okay? And this is an A. So one of the things that is great about bar chords is, is it does enable you the ability to interchange things, um, you know, which in music is commonly done, obviously. Um, you know, if you've ever gone online and watched, you know, how different songs are played, um, you know, you'll get a few different versions of every song because there are more than one way to play. You know the same song because the guitar you know depending on you know where you play it at you know you can change you know the either the key or the voicing you know of the guitar um and still you know play the same basic progression there you know relative to whatever key you know that you're changing things to so so that's probably one of the things i'm sure that you noticed there was you know that and you know same idea okay so you know if this is an e right and this is a d then, then this in turn then would have to be an E. E, E, okay, A, A, A minor, A minor. So, um, so there's a lot of different things that, you know, be incorporating bar chords into, you know, your repertoire um, is going to do for you, you know, it, it's going to open you up to a lot of different possibilities that you are now limited to, you know, by only being able to play, you know, just your open chords. No, and that's another, actually, G and G, <laughs> another example there. Okay, so, you know, just something that I wanted to explain, you know, to you guys there. Again, that's something that I wish I had known, you know, years in the past. Um, you know, it didn't make the actual physical process of learning how to, you know, form each of these, you know, bar chords. It didn't, it didn't help with that, but at least, you know, I think anything that, you know, that, that, that you, you know, understand up here, you know, will eventually translate to down here because, in, you know, really, in reality, most of guitar playing is actually in your head. So, um, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have any comments about this or questions, please leave those in the comment section. Um, if, you know, I'm just going to kind of do this as a test and see if there's any interest in this. And if there is, then I will definitely put together some additional videos in the future. So, you know, your comments, your likes, so on and so forth, you know, will let me know if this is of interest and something else that, you know, I should continue to explore. So thanks again, uh, and I appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great evening. Take care.